You realize when the conversation stopped and the car right, you're about to get assassinated. Have you ever been in another situation where you thought you were that certain that you were going to die? No. What's no. going through your head? Th Other than you're gonna die, because eventually that wears off. I'm like a thousand percent convinced, like, they're it's gonna over. kill me. Yeah, they're gonna kill me right this here. This is where it ends. Yeah, it's a pretty heavy thing, and I, and I believed in that moment I was, I was going to die. The command called us and said, hey, four, four team guys, they're here, they need you guys to go get them. This place is like freaking a hornet's nest for Taliban. But then I heard the word stop, uh, bosh, they bosh, bosh, and, and, and they're, so now they're yelling it aggressively. If I run, they're gonna kill us. And so I, I just felt like the only option to do was to fight. I saw a red Hilux truck, I turned, and as my gun came up, I saw a guy, and I just shot two rounds right center mass. What distance are you? 100 yards, super close. What I are you thinking when you, when you get sent back in? I did one more operation there. I was in such distress that I couldn't even remember what, what, what happened. What was the mission? Can you talk about that at all? I, I can't say who, but it was a, you know, the, the target was in this area of, uh, in the Fodder region, uh, but on the other side of the Afghan border. And so he's in this area and they said, can you get in, in that region, basically about 20 miles from the target, get a rifle in there and fire that rifle off without, without any kind of like compromise. I went and got hunting permits, got a rifle, traveled for a couple of days through the mountains, spent two weeks up in the mountains, and uh, went on an Ibec, Ibec hunt, killed the Ibec in a small, small mountain village, which relighted an operation to go get that target. You get home. Yeah. How's your wife receive you? She's always looked at me as strong, as a protector and provider. And she said uh, I was just completely broken and docile, and she didn't know how to handle it. I mean, literally, like she would, she would just play cards with me. We played cards like a game, card game I grew up, just to keep my mind busy. Because if my mind stopped, that went straight into a panic attack. I remember like packing our house. It's pretty, like, sounds pretty twisted, probably. We're packing our house. Our family sits together. We're crying together, holding each other, supporting each other. And, and, and they're leaning on me as a dad and a husband. And I still feel, put stuff in a U-Haul and, and, and separate our family. Chad, Robo, Robo Show. And so my wife and my counselor were like trying to snap me out of it and get me to do something. And that's when they talked me into, talked me into getting into mats and doing jiu-jitsu. I just used it as a place to hide and not get better. But I was in such a dark place. I didn't have the gun to my head. I remember having it on the floor, like kind of holding it on the floor. And I was, and I had those pictures and I was looking at those pictures and I was just, my mind was just spinning. And I heard a knock on my door and I wasn't gonna answer it. I was just gonna ignore it. I didn't know who it was. But when I heard Kathy's voice announce herself, I, I, I totally panicked. She just, she's just like, how could you do everything that I've seen you do in your life? How could you do all of that and when it comes to your family, you'll quit? My new goal was to get my family back. So I was like, what do I have to do to manipulate the situation, sweep everything under the rug and get a clean slate? And so, so I wrote a five paragraph order, op order of how I was gonna fix my life. It was super good. He wouldn't even look at it. Like I put it on a table, I slid it over to him and I'm like, hey, check this out. 
show it to my wife so I can get her back. She knows I'm serious now. She's gonna forgive me, everything's gonna be good. And he tapped on that paper and, uh, and he said something that was probably the most important thing I ever heard in my life. He said, if your plan doesn't have anything to do with your relationship with God, I'm not gonna waste your time and I'm not gonna let you waste mine. I had tried everything, man. I had been through counseling, I had been on medication, at jiu-jitsu, winning in MMA, making money. Some of those things are good, some of those things are bad, right? Everything I tried didn't work, you know? Um, but I have to have faith. Thank you.